Hey everyone, so this went perfectly, but here we are. So um, my name is Adam, I'm the CentOS Stream lead. I sort of do CentOS Stream for a day job and I work for Red Hat. Um, this is my first talk after like three years of pause. So this will be interesting. Having two laptops to do the slides because the world is beautiful. So, okay, so CentOS Stream. Um, what I wanna talk about, actually let's go back. I forgot how to do talks. Um, so we're gonna talk about two things, mostly how we Red Hat do our work or how we get work done to make RHEL and then how you can get involved and use that to participate. And this is basically the goal of CentOS Stream. Um, this is the state sort of before Stream. So everything started in Fedora and they keep innovating and doing package rebases and all sorts of once in a while, Red Hat takes portion of it and it goes through a very complex process and we get an enterprise next. And then we rebuild it. So that's just. And we did it between the software. Um, we just do anything to make the steps. So that is more. And we build in the stream. So, so that is mostly for the right thing change. But we do a continuous rebuild of subset, which is Fedora ELM. So we'll look at this preview of the next major rel version. Right now, if you go to Fedora, find Fedora ELM. This is basically rel 10. Um, right now, it's been that years. One year, I don't know, time doesn't make sense. Um, CentOS Stream tracks the next minor rel version. And this is where all the development happens. And this is really, um, I can even show the next slide which shows it slightly better. But um, yeah, th these are all the differences. There's like Fedora sources. These are rel sources. And I will show you in a moment that the CentOS stream sources and rel sources are basically the same thing for most, most of the time. And we even internally, like in our development guide, we sort of talk about these two as the same thing. CentOS stream is really like the development place for rel. So you can really, and everything is available in public. So like you can see how how things are going. So that was just like an introduction for the ELN CentOS stream. And let's get into the details of stream, how, how things flow. So this is a diagram I made and I had to fix it a little bit. It's sort of complicated. Don't worry about it. It just shows basically that everything starts with bugzilla bugs and we do merge request into GitLab. This is our Git repo with sources. And you can see it gets immediately synced internally and then goes into, through a build process. There's a build in CentOS Stream Koji that you can see and build happens internally and goes through various tags that I'll talk about. Basically build lots in one tag, then it goes through gating, which is like a testing, um, goes out to a development compose and then goes through verification, which is mostly like internal process paperwork and all sorts of stuff. And then it gets to the product, but also to the production compose. Um, what is a Compose? Um, compose is many things. We basically take a snapshot of all the builds and make a YAM repository, make an ISO that you can install container images and all sorts of things. Basically, it's how you get any distro from this universe, Fedora RHEL, CentOS Stream. Um, and let's have a look how it actually works. So I said everything starts with a bug in Bugzilla and this is someone added multipass TCP. This is like half a year ago. There was a bug in Bugzilla. Then they made a merge request. Again, you could see this. And that got submitted as a build to Koji. This is the CentOS Koji. And yeah, you could follow it all, all over like as it goes. If you scroll down, there were the tags. They're like all the gates pending candidate, what I show you as it goes. So you can even monitor that in there. So it basically did all these things in public and you could see it way before it gets to rel. So I think that's cool. Um, so this was the flow and let's talk about contribution. So starting with rel eight, Red Hat publicly said that they're gonna do new minor release every six months and new major release of rel every three years. And so you can build some expectations from that. And also um, we do some, 
this is ABI, we do some promises to our customers about RHEL around ABI guarantees and support statements and whatever you would expect from an enterprise operating system. So taking these into account for contributions, um, what can you do? So bug fixes, these are very easy. Um, don't break what customers expect. And if you find a bug, you can, you can fix it and we just review it, run it through some tests, merge it and it's in. Um, there's stable updates from upstream. This is a tricky word. Um, well, not a tricky word, but um, as RHEL gets older, it gets different from upstream, right? It lives for 10 years and it sort of diverges. And because we have these promises, um, it gets slightly tricky. Like we can't just accept any change. Some packages rebase, some don't, but if there's, so that's what the stable means. If it doesn't break the promises, we can just take them and that's all great. But most, most new features are backported, which is an interesting thing. You basically just take a feature from a newer version and put some work and put it in the old version so you have the feature but don't break anything. And this is how a lot of features happen in RHEL as well and in CentOS Stream. So these are the contributions. Um, what we can't really accept is the changes that break an ABI. And by the way, there's a thing, there's a document called the RHEL Application Compatibility Guide. You can read it, you can find it online. Um, most packages have the same ABI for 10 years, so for the entire duration of RHEL. And we take it seriously because customers build their apps, build their applications, they don't wanna change them and wanna run them forever. So um, we take this very seriously. So please don't break ABI with the contributions. We would need to politely say, no, explain and, and close it. But, um, okay, next. Um, I say maybe docs, typos, man pages. Um, if you're a customer um, and you have a bug in documentation and you can find in customer portal report issue and get it that way. Otherwise, we can take these, but we tend to batch them. And so if you open a bug fix, might get merged, but it might take some time to actually get in because developers are busy with actually um, code changes and stuff. But yeah, this really depends. And um, also wanted to show you, this is the life cycle of RHEL. As I said, it's basically 10 years. We do minor version every six months. And there's also, minor version does the dark blue we also have something called extended update support and update services for sub solutions, SAP. And then the last one is sort of longer. Um, and if you look at stream, there's like arrows and stream somehow like lives there. So for stream, you can mostly ignore this and like it follows that and once in a while, maintainers just take things into the next minor release. Um, and we have this same thing for L8 and there's also L7, there's a lot of things going on. Um, but yeah, just for reference, there's also no way in stream to communicate like which minor version it is. But if you really need to make sure something lands, just talk to the maintainer in your bugzilla and maybe you can figure it out with them. Um, okay. So that was like what contributions go to stream. And this is how, this is just a few obvious thing. You can open bugs in Bugzilla, you can test stream, you can, if you find something that's broken for you, you can get it in and it's much better than before, like you can get it in maybe the next minor release. Um, you're also welcome to open merge requests, just we would ask you please open a bug first, talk to the maintainer and that's a great way to contribute. And if you, if you do contribute, this is just from the diagram again. This is how you can follow your change. If a build lands, you can see this in-stream Koji. It, it goes through these tags and then passes the test. You can get it. And then the production compose we do manually like every week or so based on how healthy the development compose is, which mostly is. So every week or so we get a new production compose. And you can get these on composes.stream.org. 
Um, or you can take the packages from Koji if you want to really test them earlier, but otherwise they, they will show up here. All right, um, let's talk about how you can use CentOS Stream. Um, you can use it to preview features that might be coming to RHEL or are coming to RHEL. Um, try them earlier, see if your stuff works. You can submit patches, file back reports. Um, and if you build on top of RHEL, if you have a project that builds on top of RHEL, you can use CentOS Stream in your CI to get an idea of what the next versions might be or should be. And you can get some results that way and get fixes landed much, much earlier and be ready for the next RHEL. Um, we also have um, six special interest groups and Many of them are here. There'll, there'll be talks throughout this conference as well, FOSDEM. Um, they do their work in CBS, which is the community build service, a build system. And Stream lives there as one of the build routes. So you can definitely use Stream in there and work with the SIGs. And also you can try their content on CentOS Stream. Um, OK, so this will be a short wrap up or like short I lost the word. Anyway, we're going to talk about what's next. <laughs> so I showed this diagram, Fedora, Fedora EL, and CentOS Stream, and Red Enterprise Linux. And with RHEL 10, we're basically here. Um, so if you want to contribute towards RHEL 10, push your changes to Fedora Rawhide. You can see them in Rawhide, but also you can see them in ELN, rebuilt with the RHEL flags, which is like closest to RHEL as we can get right now. And Later, when we're actually, this is from nine, so this is not 10, but like I can demonstrate it on this. Um, just to explain, you can see Fedora Rawhide branch. This is like where the development goes. There's very few, very um, frequent ABI rebases and stuff. We rebuild ELN there as well. And then we do something called Bootstrap, which like we branch CentOS Stream 9 and then start building RHEL from that. And I actually have a better picture I just took a photo of. Nope, it didn't make the slides. OK. Um, <laughs> you can see it on papers there. But basically, the rail line started like somewhere there. And it demonstrated like three eras of rail, <laughs> sort of like. Um, right now, with 10, we're in Fedora ELN. You can contribute mostly anything that you can in Fedora. Then when we branch CentOS Stream, but before we ship RHEL, there's still possible possibility to do like ABI changes. But after RHEL ships, which is currently nine, we no longer can accept um, ABI breaking changes. So these are like three different states. So 10 is in the ELN state, nine is well over in the, in the purpose state. So yeah, this is where you can get sources, uh, contributions to 10. But that's mostly it for me. Um, some useful links, and I would like to, get, to take some questions or discussions. Um, thank you. If anybody has any questions, we have a mic to pass around. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for the recording, we need the. Yep. So before Fedora, um, ELN, you used to freeze in a specific version of Fedora and then you take for CentOS. So what, how this would be different than ELN? I assume that ELN, for example, for RHEL 10 would be Fedora 40, 38? Six releases from now, yeah. So you will freeze Fedora, Rawhead, to be Fedora ELN, and then you will take Fedora ELN from, from there, right? And then Fedora ELN after release 10 will continue getting Rawhead again from Fedora. No, so Rawhide is, I can show you the diagram again. Um, so Rawhide is, uh, sorry, ELN is always tracking Rawhide. So that never changes, but we branch CentOS stream from that. So ELN is always, basically the moment we branch CentOS stream 10, ELN becomes RHEL 11, sort of. So essentially, you keep it in update when Rawhide, whenever you need to have any minor versions, changes in your RHEL. Yeah. Right? yeah, then for stream, yeah. we we. Yeah, these are like the, you can see the arrows, like we can pull some changes to CentOS Stream after Fedora branches, but um, 
not all of them. This is manual process, then like we choose what we would get. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it works. Um, so why a center stream it's not uh, following the, the end, end of life uh, cycle also as uh, rel? I mean, it's around five years, right? But we, we have uh, 10 years uh, for, for rel. Why, what, what happens? Why is this gap between five years uh, of difference between them? Um, I guess you yeah, you, you might be referring to this. Um, Right, yeah, so um, stream, the goal of stream is to um, contribute to the next minor version of RHEL. And that basically goes up, up until there, but then there's like no really new minor version like happening. Um, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, actually, Alexander has, yes. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I know that, it, that for instance, for nine, it's up to 2027, right? Which is uh, yeah. nine. Point 10. There's a much smarter person than me to answer the question. <laughs> uh, first of all, there's still like slight discussions happening in the background. What will happen with that uh, 10 part and uh, maybe something will change. But uh, we need to understand that like um, what happens with center stream is that we made uh, CentOS Stream part of RHEL engineering responsibilities. So CentOS Stream becomes the overhead on RHEL engineering for every change we do. We need to care about CentOS Stream commit. We need to verify, test it, and so on. We do as much as possible to remove that overhead to, to reduce it to the minimal step, but it's still an overhead. And of course, like a rel, uh, rel engineering considers trade-offs, which this brings and uh, supporting it for five more years, it's a lot of work as well. And of course, uh, also we are in, in position that we want to bring people forward. We don't want actually people to sit for 10 years on something while we're already developing 11 and 12 version. We want to encourage people to move with us together. And that's why like I personally, I believe five years support cycle is enough for most many use cases. Some people will find counter examples for me, of course. But also like with Center as a stream, we brought in a year and a half before of uh, the release, uh, the supported life cycle. So you should, on board to send to a stream earlier and you should off board and, and get on the next version earlier. And like, it's for the best of the community, for the best of use of our resources. And it's like, I think it's a good thing in the end. So uh, that's my take on it. And just uh, to add something to what Alexandra said, for me, uh, normally 0 0.0 versions of RHEL used to be not good. And since stream is public, 0, 0.0 version are actually usable. Are there any more? Were there more hands up that I, I thought Neil? Neil? How do you figure out who the, the RHEL maintainer actually is to talk to? <laughs> because there is no way I have figured out in three years of doing this how to figure that out. That's a great question. Um, no, no, no. Um, you mostly can. So, like, if... Because I looking... can't use the Fedora maintainers as a guideline for this. No, no, no. Thing. You can't use the Fedora maintainers. Um, if, if the rel people, like, that sometimes match but like that's when you can one way you can do it um if the bugzilla gets assigned or you can talk in the bugzilla to the maintainer that's that's the way but yeah i don't think there's really yeah uh, assigning the bugzilla doesn't work because a bunch of teams redirect bugzilla to devnal um so i had this happen before where i file a bug against mm -hmm. something and it gets assigned to null literally like and it when I find these, I file bugs and it gets eventually fixed, but that's not ideal. Um, what I, the trick I've used is look at the committers on GitLab. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that works. Uh, oftentimes the committer is one of three people and then I just bug them. Uh, but like 
I know them, so I don't think a random person that outside of the project would like to contribute would be comfortable doing that. Uh, I have, maybe we can get a list somewhere. Like that would be really nice. So to have a service where we can look up contacts for package, like we have for Fedora. Yeah, I, Alexander might give you some answer again, but like um, I'll give you sort of non-answer. What I'm working on for L10 as well is like there's a tool called Content Resolver where you define the content set and like I'm at least mapping rail subsystems to the packages, and I would love to get the maintainers there as well. So you should you should see it, but this is something that's in progress. Um, Alexander. Yeah, so from perspective of rel engineering, the official way is Bugzilla SNE. And if it's SNE is a person, this means it's a person and uh, who is responsible for maintaining the package. And if it's a mailing list, it might may be a group of people responsible for this because like in, in rel, uh, there's uh, uh, not always is one person per package. There's, there's some uh, distribution of load between teams and there are like subsystem teams responsible for development. If you say this doesn't work, this is a good feedback. And uh, one way to bring this feedback is uh, to uh, the um, uh, working group. I, I don't remember exactly how the, the, the full name of this working group, the one which is where Josh Boyer is, uh, uh, Brian, uh, Brian is there. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and so basically uh, there is a center as a SIG uh, about like a real collaboration and real features and you can escalate uh, things there if we don't work. But uh, yeah, in, in RHEL, we don't have single person uh, always responsible. There, there, there are teams and this makes sometimes uh, responsibilities not clear and sometimes lost. And definitely if there's no proper SNE in Bugzilla for a component, it's a bug and uh, like content resolver work, which uh, Adam is doing actually helps to fix these links and ha have, a have this information uh, in, in the right place. So we had a, a question in the, in the online chat. Mm -hmm. Question of, oh my God, even with glasses, I can't read. Uh, is the, the packaging Git repositories in Fedora and CentOS, uh, are they going to be linked? Is the question. Sorry, say again. The packaging Git repository of Fedora and CentOS are going to be linked? I'm sorry, I can't elaborate. I'm just the messenger. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> if... if <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, like one repo for Fedora and CentOS. Oh, you mean like this Git? Okay, I, I guess the, I guess I get the question. Yeah, sorry, I'm not slow. I just take time. Um, yeah, the question was if we if we think about one source repo, use repo with branches for Fedora, CentOS, Stream Rail. Um, I don't think so at this moment. Although there's many things moving to GitLab, so maybe that could happen in the future. But there's I don't think I've seen discussions about this. Okay, Alexandra oh. <laughs> again knows more than I do. Why don't you do the talk? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sorry, exactly. I will just keep, keep going. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, Fedora and CentOS packages, uh, while, while we use snapshot of Fedora state or Fedora ELN state to bootstrap CentOS, uh, we still add changes and they're not the same. So while there is a sync process, it's not exactly like the same Git history of every package. There are some changes which are uh, per, that applied on top and uh, CentOS and Fedora packages not always share the history or not even uh, share uh, the like uh, branching approach and, and, and things like that. So they are kind of linked at the bootstrap process, but not after that, right? Right, that's maybe, I, yeah, I understand the question a little bit more even like, yeah. Um, yeah, on this bootstrap diagram, like, yeah, they're basically the same thing for ELN and Rawhide. Then when we bootstrap, we pull changes, but they diverge so much. So, yeah, it makes no sense to, like, keep them in sync. But there might be still things getting pulled in. Okay. I think uh, in the interest of time, we should move on to the next one. So thank you, Adam. Thank you.